Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And my cards for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. If you're new here, first off, welcome. And Color Throwdown Challenge. It is just a weekly challenge that is just for fun. There's a group of us that do it. Um, and yeah, new color combo every single week. Anybody can play along. I will have a link to this week's challenge in my blog post, which is linked below the video in the description box. So you can check that out below. You can play along if you'd like. At the bare minimum, it's worth checking out just for inspiration. Honestly, th especially this week's one, it threw me off for a second because this is why I play along with it. These are not colors I would go for. And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? <laughs> Florals. Those, that, and I'm, my answer for everything. And specifically, this ginormous set. This is the Primrose Garden die set from Concord 9th. Like, big, big die set. And I purchased this a couple months ago. I forget exactly. This came out, I think, a couple months ago. I forget. And I just, obviously, I fell in love with it. And I purchased it. And it's been sitting here. So I pulled it out. And I used it. And I made a couple of shaped cards using the largest die in the set and then did very simple um like ink blending it's just a, an easy way to sort of step up just plain die cuts and splatter of course and all the things so if you keep watching I'll show you guys how I made this card and then like everything else there will be a supply list with links to all the supplies in the description box below the video as well and as always, my links are affiliate links. That just means that if you click on one of my links and end up placing an order, I get a little kickback from that at no extra cost to you. And that's what helps pay the bills, fund the channel, all the things. So let's get into making these cards. So I did all the die cutting of the florals, etc., etc., off camera. Nothing special there. And I die cut... Um, all the, the large florals of this um, background, whatever you want to call it, from Simon Says Stamps Lipstick Red cardstock. And to step it up as well, like just to give it dimension, I'm going to ink blend a darker shade of red ink onto these. And for that, I'm using Concord 9th Cranberry Ink. And then my very much loved uh, Waffle Flower Shader 1 Plus blending brushes and I just start in the center and then pull the ink out. I'm not worried about how the center is going to look because that's going to get covered up with the actual little die cut flower center pieces. So I went around, blended all these. I did the same thing with the smaller florals, just kind of started in the center, pulled it out and then that sort of um, cupped half floral I blended from the top because that's the back and then from the bottom on the piece that's going to go in the front and it'll kind of make sense when it's all put together. And I have all the pieces. I'm just sticking them to my um, Altenew Ultra Sticky Grid Grip Mat. And I did all the red florals with just that one shade. And then these large leaves I die cut from, I think it's Simon's Apple Green. I'll have a li list of um, all the cardstock colors I used. But I die cut these leaves from a lighter shade of green. And then I'm blending uh, Concord 9's Avocado ink. And especially on lighter cardstock, these inks, whether it's the Concord 9th inks or like Simon's Positively Saturated inks, and I'm finding the Ultinew Fresh Dye inks are similar similar in formula. Um, on lighter cardstocks, they'll go on a lot darker like that. It dries back significantly. Like it'll smooth out, it'll dry back. So if you have a very specific look in mind, I highly recommend just like taking a scrap of whatever color cardstock and just adding whatever inks you want to it and then let it completely dry. You know, even like leave it overnight and come back to it later. You'd be surprised sometimes about how much it changes. So for that other greenery, I did um, the darker green cardstock and parsley ink. And then for all the little berries, I use Soft Navy cardstock and Concord and 9th Midnight ink. So blend that onto all of them. And you can, like I said, you can always skip this. You could do just, just the cardstock. You know, that, it'll look amazing. But, you know, if you want to create more depth, more dimension, step it up a bit. 
ink blending is one of the easiest ways to do it or markers. That's what I use just for these little flower centers because I was like, I'm not going to fiddle with tiny little blending brushes just, just for the centers, you know? I was like a marker, quick and easy. So I grabbed uh, a couple Copic markers. I actually die cut more florals than I needed because I wasn't 100% certain when I was just, I was, you know, in the zone, just die cutting all the things, the throwing my scraps onto the top of the dies and just die cutting away. And then I was like, when it was time to put everything together, I was like, oh, I've got extras. Eh, nothing wrong with that. So these ones I die cut from the white cardstock. And then, yeah, just used a couple of Copic markers to add, you know, a little bit of color, a little bit of dot detail, etc., to the centers. And then for the card base, you could use just a standard A2 card base. That's kind of like the, the size these make. But I decided to use the, the outline wafer die to actually like make the card base shaped. So I've got my card base. It's A2 side folding white note card. I took the, the outline wafer die and I lined it up so that on the left hand side where the fold is, the parts of the wafer die hang over the edge, which you can see right there so that they won't cut, you know, past the um, score line. And then the other thing I did was I grabbed a brand new cutting plate because my main cutting plate for my die, for any of my die cut machines, um, I use it until there's nothing left of it. <laughs> you know, you can't see through it. It's a mess. However, when you are running something like a folded over card base through, I didn't want to use my normal die cutting plate because I, you know, when you run it through your die cut machine, all the pressure, like the backs of your die cuts will have all that texture pressed into them, which normally doesn't matter, you know, because no one's going to see the back, you're gluing it onto things, etc. But because this is a card base, I didn't want the back of the cardstock pressed into my janky die cut plate, you know, because then it would have all that texture pressed into it. So by using a fresh plate that it keeps the back of my, you know, card my card base kind of pristine and then I'm just going to set that die cut plate aside for the eventual time when I actually need to switch over to a new plate you know when when it finally when the the main one gives up the ghost <laughs> so I could have run it through twice you saw it did not cut all the way through like in the first pass I could have just run it through a second time but honestly I just took my scissors because it die cut through the top layer of the card no problem and it cut almost completely through the second layer but rather than run it through a second time I just used my scissors and just went around quickly and just snipped those little bits here and there that were still connected to the back of the card but I don't like I said you could just run it through a second time it would have been fine and then there's this large wafer die that does the piercing detail of like the floral arrangement and you can use this or you can skip it. I decided to use it because one, it gives a placement guide and two, I will show later, like at the end of the video when I like show the cards close up, I liked the detail it gave to the inside of the card. It was kind of cool. So I ran that through after making my card bases and then set those aside. And then I pulled out my Misty and a larger piece of that same soft navy cardstock. And I used my anti-static powder tool that just helps keep the embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped um, sentiments. And then I'm using the coordinating stamp set for this die set. And it's the Primrose Garden stamp set. And it's got a bunch of different um, sentiments and they're meant to fit on the little banner wafer die that comes with the die set. So I stamped the sentiments I wanted to use with clear embossing ink. And then I coated them with detail white embossing powder, tapped off the excess. Then I'm going to melt this with my heat tool. And then I'm going to set that aside and I'll come back to it in a second. Because while I had my Misty out, um, I wanted to stamp sentiments onto the insides of these cards as well. So I just opened them up, stuck them in my Misty, and then lined up um, sentiments from that exact same set. And I'm going to stamp them with that uh, midnight ink. So that like navy shade of ink so that the insides also have a little sentiment. Because you guys know, I can't leave the insides of my cards like completely plain. <laughs> so stamp the one, lined up the second one. I use different sentiments because I decided, you know, while I was doing this and, you know, the, the sets, the, the sentiments all fit that same banner. It's like, oh, let's make two different cards. So one's just kind of like an any occasion card and then the other one's going to be a birthday card. So now back to the heat emboss sentiments. I used my microfiber cloth and just wiped off um, all of that excess anti-static powder uh, around the heat embossed image. And then I'm going to use the little banner wafer die from the set to die cut the sentiments. And then there's two little individual 
pieces that will be adhered behind this to make it look like an actual little banner. So I die cut all of the pieces and then I'm going to stick them to my um, grip mat and I'm going to add a bit of ink blending to these two so that everything you know ties together has that dimension. So I'm going to use that same midnight ink and I'm going to blend it onto the little kind of tabs basically on either side of this banner. And then I'm also going to add that ink on the edges of the actual sentiments here. And because the sentiments were heat embossed, the heat embossing technically resists the ink. But because one, this is also very, very like dark ink. Some of the ink is sitting like on top of that heat embossing. So after I'm done blending, I'm just going to take my cloth and just wipe over the the heat embossed sentiments and that's going to remove any of that ink that's sitting on top so once i've got those all um ready to go i can start assembling my card front and i did the first one off camera so i could figure out what i was doing <laughs> and also the back of the packaging has everything laid out so if you want to follow it exactly which that's what i did for today because i was like yeah i, I don't feel like reinventing the wheel today <laughs> So I just followed the example as they set it out on the packaging. And then all that piercing detail also, just you can just basically follow it. I use the packaging more for some of the pieces that kind of layer on top. Because once you start getting everything laid down, you don't, you know, you lose all of that piercing detail. So you don't know where things are going. The other thing to note is um, I go very light handed on the adhesive. Normally I'm kind of, I kind of go in a little gung-ho with my liquid glue. Even that, even saying that though, I don't use that much. Like you don't need much, you know, liquid glue. Once it's, once it's adhered, it's going to adhere. You don't need a ton of it. But I went lighter handed with everything I was adhering because, you know, all these leaves have all of the, the slits like cut through them. So you don't want glue oozing out through that. You also don't want it oozing through the card front. That's also why I opened the card like this while I'm adhering because I was like mm, if any glue does get through it'll just um once it's dry it's not you know sticky or tacky or anything like that and then I'm not going to glue my card front like to the card base because been there done that anyway assembled everything you know as it appears on the packaging and since I'd figured it out on the first card I knew like where I was going with all this like starting with the the large leaves and then you just kind of build it all up from there so this was fun, honestly. And like, like I was saying in the intro, this color combo, I, you know, red, blue, gold. I was like, eh, I know that's not my thing. But when, as I was putting these together, I was like, I really like this. It looks really nice. <laughs> this is why I do the color throwdown challenge, you guys, because yeah, these are not color combos I normally reach for. I'm usually like rainbow or like pink, purple, and aqua, you know, like that's just what I like to do. Anyway. I just kept working my way around and adhering all the different little little bits and pieces here. And there's a, a purposeful little opening there at the bottom, kind of bottom right of this um, arrangement. And there is a little stamp and it's shown in the on the packaging too that says from all of us that you can stamp like right there as well so I kind of thought that was cute that they purposely like left that little spot there for it I decided not to add that to my cards I'm gonna actually put a little bit of bling there instead but yeah it was just a cute little addition so I got all my little pieces adhered and then I can adhere that big floral oh and the centers I die cut from just uh Simon's matte gold cardstock so that gave that brought in the gold as part of the the challenge and I just the shininess of it you know they say it's matte gold but it's still got a nice shine to it so got those all adhered to the card front got my little banner assembled I'm gonna adhere that and then of course I'm gonna add splatter you know I wasn't gonna but it was in the back of my mind the whole time and then I'm like of course I'm going to you know go big or go home and for those that don't like splatter you don't need to do it you also don't need to post in the comments how much you don't like it that's okay. You don't have to like it, but you also don't need to like come after me for it. I love it to each their own, but if you don't like it, don't do it. It's all good. <laughs> anyway, I'm using the, I showed this in my, my haul video, the one I posted the other day. This is the Yasu, Yasutomo, uh, pale gold. I find it interesting. They call it pale gold. I would not call this pale. It's just a pretty gold. Um, Mine, this is where I really discovered that I have not been washing my fan brush very well at all. Uh, I ended up getting like a bunch of black into this um, pan. I'm fine with it. Um, I just wiped it out afterwards. 
but you just add a bit of water. I swirled my brush in it and then I splatter this on the background. Um, my first impressions are, I, I like this. I like the splatter stuff. If you want more options with the Gonsai Tombi that I've used in a bajillion videos, wonderful. Um, this is more matte, which that kind of surprised me, but it's also pretty. So I was like, oh, I'm glad it doesn't look exactly like like my Gonsai Tombi because that kind of would have sucked. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty, but it's definitely like kind of like a matte finish. So I splattered that onto these cards. Oh, and I used just copy paper. I die cut it with the, the little banner wafer die and I stuck that on top of the sentiments. I've shown this in other videos. You can also use like the stamp itself, like the, sen the sentiment stamps. I'll use those as a mask as well. Um, I just did that to protect the sentiment so I didn't get splatter all over them. And then the funny thing is, is I remove it and I splatter over them anyway. <laughs> Because once I removed them, I was like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like how like everything has splatter because I went I went in heavy with the splatter. So I also did my white gouache, stuck that on my palette, added a bit of water to thin it out and then splattered it. And then here I'm removing my little copy paper masks and I just it bugged me. It you could totally leave this. But yeah, I was like, no, the the, the front part of the banners with the sentiments need need some splatter too. So I just took a little tiny brush, this like little little tiny like size two brush, and then added a bit of splatter. <laughs> so I could have just skipped masking it, but that was like an extra 10 seconds of my time. So it wasn't a big deal. So I added the white and the gold to the, the sentiments as well, just cause. And then my final little bit of embellishment is just some little white pearls. These are the Trinity Stamps, uh, something new embellishment mix. And I just stuck a few of these, you know, just, just to finish it off. So once I was happy with the placement of these, I just adhered them into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue, just picking them up with my little, my little embellishment wand. And then once these are adhered into place, I just got to let the glue dry and these cards will be complete. And then I can show you guys the close up. I'll show you the inside, how you can see the, all the piercing detail on the inside. And like I said, I just, it gave that a little extra something. I love it. So as always, I will have links below the video. I'll have a link to my blog post. In the blog post, there'll be the link to the color throwdown challenge. I will have my supply list with links to all the supplies I used. So you can just expand the description box directly below the video and all that info will be there along with like links to my social medias and all the things. So you can check that out below if you were interested. As always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting, letting those robot overlords know you guys like what you see. And when I say robot overlords, I'm talking about the algorithms that just run my entire career, really. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have have you and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!